Peters put it on the floor. Burmeister will keep this stat. Locates Johnson, his first miss, leads to a bell rebound. One on three, Jonathan will await some assistance. And JP, Jonathan Bell and Javon Powell, these two unheralded with their size, but they both have been averaging double-digit scoring this year. And it's Harris, top 10 in the conference in scoring. That's tough, man. He's just a really good offensive player, man. Does take so many, so many positive plays in the offensive game. I think see him bring it like that on defense at times. When you understand that a scouting report can be your best friend, the teams are analyzing. A lot of them on jump shots. They run him off the line. He'll go to work in the block. Exactly. Exactly. He has great size. So in the Southern Conference, he's average six.
keep him alive. Mark Ward, not going to give up on a loose ball. Good call for the foul. Picked up for the fourth in the first six minutes of the game. Ward has told you a great free throw shooting team and having another solid season for the Lions. And they've got an early lead of two division teams that seems to make up for some of those mistakes by getting to the bonus early. This season, and he frees up the Andre Anderson three ball. Nine early points in the first seven and a half minutes for the graduate center. He's just a really good score for him. It's going to be hard to get down on him and get to the end. He's going to use Thomas. He's going out of the high post. He even does a screen. If you go under that screen, Harrison makes the pay. And now Thomas on another, and he blocks the three point at the pipe, forces the steal. Harris up and running. Woo! Taking over on the defensive stand, gets the steal, can't finish in the inside. Johnson on the glass, and now Hart, one on two by three defenders, and he finishes by what the house he is talking about. That's that even quickness I was talking about earlier. Two kids in transition or two opportunities to shoot some quickness. You can really do that and put the defense there for him. We do have a lot of very deep ones right now. Harris in on his chance, great shot for the Cardinals. Green Thomas. That's his second. his case for a second Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Week award. At 35 points earlier this week, 11 in the first eight minutes of the conference opener. Charles Ross top by nine. John Johnson trying to find a little offense. He and Simi Sox have developed a lethal offensive relationship. Sox, second 15-footer we've seen him hit. A tough jump shot right there again. He's the cheapest spin on the basketball, man. Big guy's really skilled. How do you match up with a, a power forward who wants to stretch it and then can play really tough interior defense, complete package, and now he and Devin Wyatt showing their defensive skill on the flip side. Wyatt with the block, Sox runs the break, four in a row for Semi Sox. Cardinals are back within five. You just start by being there on the catch. Garnet Word happy to play at the pace that the Colonels are encouraging. Great pass. And Ward and Powell exchanging for a 20-foot bounce pass for the layup.
just talked about how this game is moving to a positionless game. You almost have to have bigs that can make, can be very skilled outside, shoot and pass, just like a guard could. Sox finally misses, and Harris tracks down a midcourt rebound. Burmeister, no match, as Harris will draw a late foul. He wanted the goaltend. Devin Wyatt is second in the conference in blocks, and we are getting an inside look at the skill set he possesses. Credit Harris for drawing a little body contact before that ball was smashed off the glass. Yeah, great move by Harris, man. Really using the, his skill set, the Euro step right there to get to the free throw line. It, it's deceptive with the type of move he makes with that Euro step. It's almost like he goes into slow-mo mode, but he's doing it to get a little extension, get a little separation. And he has lived at the line over the last three weeks of the year. A little James Harden right there, Brian. Sincerest form of flattery is imitation, and we've seen guys like DeAndre Harris obsess over YouTube clips of their favorite players, and when you can break down body control and take something from the greats in the game, it's a player who wants to learn, who wants to improve. Exactly. Harris accounting for more than half of the Colonel's points as it's back to a nine-point lead, and now Janante Fry takes away the baseline and forces another turnover from Sox. Great job by Fry cutting off the baseline right there. A great extra pass in Cornet Word there. You force six turnovers against one of the more efficient offenses in the conference. An incarnate word team that shoots just under 50% from the floor. Best three-point shooting team in the conference with the way they've been shooting at, as of late. Six turnovers in the first nine and a half minutes, and now a nine-point lead to work with. And this is where Jadante Fry will make a living at the international level. Goes to work in the block. One rejection. Great hustle play. And Wyatt contests the second shot. Coach Riley wants a goaltend. But credit Sean Johnson for locking up Jadante Fry in the post. Hart going to work against Adam Ward. Powell reached late. Great ball control. And this is why Jalen Hart is the biggest factor the Colonels have to contain. Yeah, Brian, his speed and quickness, it's pretty fierce. You know, a guy that has that, that has that speed and quickness, you almost have to change your body, your stance, from an open stance to a closed stance. Hard up to five points. He and Devin Wyatt, they were teammates with New Mexico Junior College last year. And fast forward a year, they almost took down Texas in Austin. Five and six in non-conference. They're both starters in conference play. What a ride it's been for those two. But their Cardinal teammates still unable to find an answer to stop DeAndre Harris. Yeah. Great play call by Coach Riley. Getting the ball in your best offensive player's hands right there. Know the game is shrinking back up, getting back to the free throw line. The Great call by the, Coach Riley. The, the, the aggression early in the game has led to a lot of these beneficial calls that are going the Colonel's way. If you open the game and you're just launching from 20, 25 feet, you're not going to be rewarded. First eight points all came in the points, all came in the paint, and now we're seeing the response from the officials. They're giving the benefit of the doubt to DeAndre Harrison, up to 14 points in the game, but it's his free throw shooting that's really been the story. Five free throw attempts make it six in the first 10 and a half minutes. It's a great point, Brian. You start, you set the tone, beginning of the game as they're aggressive. They'll deflect it away from Tyler Singleton. Really impressive backup point guard that they rarely play with Jalen Hart. Let's see how these two work together as Tim Burmeister will go small and watch as Hart turns it over. Not sure why you're looking for Banks in the post. And now Harris off and running for three. He'll miss the wing tray. Burmeister a rare rebound and Hart will try to make up for the previous turnover. Great contest, but it doesn't matter. You know, we talked about his speed and quickness, but my gosh, to finish in the lane over bigs like that, it's pretty special. Think of how many junior college and Division II players just wanted a chance. Devin Wyatt, Jalen Hart, proving their worth in the conference opener. Clear out time against Singleton. Plenty of separation. Too easy, DeAndre Harris. Again, another great call by Coach Riley. He senses the game creeping back in and gets the ball back in his best player's hands. 22 points at home against Spring Hill College. It wasn't a fluke in the first half on Wednesday. 17 
in the first 12 minutes today. And Adam Ward, one rejection at the rim, but why it wouldn't stop. First field goal of the year, Banks is on the board. Yeah, tough for Banks, staying with the play, keeping it alive, putting it back in. Strong finish there. We've seen some major adjustments made by Incarnate Word to try to keep this game close. And now Ward trying to show off a little range. Not his strong suit, and not, Banks follows up with the board. Yeah, not his strong suit at all. I think, don't think Coach Riley was happy with that. And Ward will pick up his second foul. Take a rush jumper on one end, followed up with a foul on the next. Both teams are in the bonus for the final eight minutes of the first half. Colonels have led start to finish, but Incarnate Word, as they are known to do, hanging around in the conference opener from Thibodeau tonight. there for the taking. Southland Conference 2017. Anyone's guess who will finish atop this conference at the end of the year. Houston Baptist goes on the road and beats Sam Houston State in the first game of the year. Sam Houston was preseason number one. Singleton misses the free throw. Incarnate Word down by six early in this game. Colonels think they can contend for a Southland Conference championship. I believe so, Brian. I mean, they showed it in their non-conference. You know, it's just about staying with the grind. This is going to be a grinding conference. Singleton at 64% from the free throw line on the year. He'll miss both. But Javon Powell, a gift, gives it back to Banks. Singleton can run the fast break and an easy layup for Semi Sox, who's become an offensive force for Incarnate Word. He's up to eight points. Again, we talked about it being a positionless game. Bigs that can finish and transition and pass and shoot. And they're trying to body the locality pack that Banks has offered. Liam finally gets separation, but walks with it. Yeah, just got to come to two feet right there, Brian, on the jump stop. 6'9", Tom Jr. Rebounds at Kilgore College. And he was in Texas the last couple of years. Wow. He has made a huge impact on this game, and he'll make a little slash screen on the baseline. Sox is now in double figures. Wow. Just a strong finish right there. Just talked about Liam with two feet. Sox comes to two feet and finishes it. And Banks knows when to play off and when to approach Thomas with some physicality. Colonels have had a couple rough offensive possessions. Thomas tries to change that and the fadeaway. Not friendly as Johnson seizes the rebound. The offense has revolved around one man for Incarnate Word. They'll try to show a little more versatility, but Banks is still without a field goal. And now Nichols, a rare chance to run. Bell won't answer, and all you see are Cardinals in the interior. They're owning the defensive rebounding game. And they're being more physical right now, Brian. And this is when depth becomes a big problem for Nichols. Their scoring is with their starters in the lead for the first time tonight. Now resides with Incarnate Word. Timmy Sox exploding in the first half. 13 points. He finds Sean Johnson for his first three. 
28-27 lead for the Cardinals. And we have a Sean Johnson sighting, Brian. Go into this game, you look at Johnson, Hart, and Sox, and you wonder who among those three will take roll call first and try to be that, that initial score. First five minutes of the game, all three disappeared. Sox allowed them to compete. He made it close. Hart had five straight points at, in one juncture. You're Ken Burmeister, and you're watching the number five score in the conference just get on the board 14 minutes into the half, and now you have the lead. That'll put a smile on your yes, face. Without a doubt, Brian. Definitely would. There, there's just no way that Sean Johnson is going to find himself with eight, nine points at the end of this game. He has been a reliable 16, 17 point player. That it took him this long to score is surprising, but that you have Hart along with Simi Sox that have picked up the scoring load, disconcerting for the Colonels. Yeah. And a credit to the Colonels and Coach Riley for keeping them down for so long so far. We'll see if it continues. After making this a 27 to 19 lead, it's a 9-0 run for Incarnate Word. All the offense has come from this man, DeAndre Harris. He finally misses, and the tipping is waved off. Offensive foul on Liam Thomas. Foul number three on Liam. And we talked about trusting your players. Coach Riley designated to trust Liam in that situation. Unlucky call there, but he's most likely going to have to sit the rest of this half. Your philosophy on how to approach a, a player who picks up two fouls really can change game by game, situation by situation. You understand why Liam was left in the game Physicality for Incarnate Word became a big problem. You only have Adam Ward as an, as an option off the bench. He's your only other big that can play. Exactly. Well, now Liam Thomas has no choice. He's stuck on the bench for the next six minutes. Great point, Brian. Yes, he is. Semi Sox, one and one for one of the best free throw shooters in the conference. And if he figures out how to become more of a complete passer and defender, sky's the limit for Sox, 84% free throw shooter, and he's up to 11 points. for a team that opened the year without any clue who their number one option would be offensively. Jalen Hart, Simi Sox, and Sean Johnson have all offered a pretty clear indication about who the future resides with. 11-0 run for Incarnate Word, and those three doing all the damage. Powell scoreless against Spring Hill College, and he's been shut out tonight. Yeah, Brian, he has to Again, use his defense to create opportunities to get on, get scores offensively. Now offensive. you forget about Burmeister, a player who, who went through a 50-game slump before returning to his freshman form five games ago. He's two for two on threes. Yes, huge three right there. 12-0 run for Incarnate Word, and DeAndre Harris receiving a significant amount of defensive attention. He'll settle and still score. Step back three. <laughs> well, that's just great one-on-one -on -one play, Brian. Harris is a force to be reckoned with. And you can see the tenacity in his eyes as he shades Singleton at the point. Great ball movement as Johnson has an ISO attack, but stripped away late from Sox. Harris comes up with the steal. Colonels can finally run. Remarkable dribbling by Harris. He's got his man in the corner. It's Jonathan Bell. Three won't fall. And Harris lucky to come back up with the offensive rebound. Bell was ready to support Harris off of a sweet steal and fast break opportunity. Couldn't cash it in. And now Harris gets to go back to work, and he'll have an opportunity to, to shoot some free throws after the next foul on the Cardinals. They'll pick up their 16th foul in the first half. Who wants to support DeAndre Harris is the question. Uh, Brian, he's tough to contain. My goodness. His handle and his body, he's so slithery getting to the rim. 20 of the 30 points for the Colonels, courtesy of DeAndre Harris. Dante Fry only one field goal. Repahowski, he's looking That's for one. That's a little one. support, Brian. And a rim run for Repahowski. Best scoring option for the Colonels off the bench, but Nichols won't get back. A rare miss by Johnson. And Richie Riley energized on the bench as the Colonels will have some free throws. And I, I like that from Coach Riley, you know. He, we had a couple of possessions where the defense wasn't as energized. He's energizing his guys. 
Brad they feed off of you. Steve Orcus and Kelly Hunter are officials, and whenever you can get an official to stop their call before it's made to give you a quick message, you know they hear you. <laughs> yes. And Coach Riley, after a seven and six start in non-conference play, taking a team that was preseason number 11 in the Southland Conference, putting them in a position to not only contend for the Southland Conference tournament appearance, they want a bye in the first round of the That's tournament. Right. That's right. He has his eyes set on the prize, and he's got his guys locked in. Jonathan Bell is three for three from the line. You have the oldest team in Division I basketball, and it's veterans like Jonathan Bell that allow you to withstand some of these runs. And Colonel Word goes on a 12-0 run. Colonels bounce back with five of their own, and they've got the lead back in their favor. Brian, it starts with being coachable. These guys are coachable, man. Jalen Hart back in for Incarnate Word, and he just changes the tone and tempo. Whenever the ball is in his hand, you see the defense react promptly. They know what he's capable of, and he was the one that ignited the Cardinal offense. Johnson really struggling with his handle. Now Burmeister has Kite working wing to wing with him. He's already hit a couple threes. Harris has to run him off the line. Great pass underneath, and Banks eventually finishes. Great ball movement by the Cardinals there. Saw three sides of the floor, four passes around the perimeter, then a drop down for a layup. Sam Burmeister, 6'4", 200-pound redshirt junior out of San Antonio, coach's son, delivering some great playmaking ability. But there's no answer for DeAndre Harris, who finds himself replicating his previous total from the first half against Spring Hill. Another 22 points in the first half for DeAndre Harris. He's amazing. One man wrecking through an offense. Colonel's enjoying a one-point lead, and Javon Powell energized on the sideline, almost comes up with the steal. Back and forth we go, Cardinals and the Colonels on a wet and soggy New Year's Eve from Thibodeau. DeAndre Harris putting the team on his back, 22. The Colonels 35 points in the first half at home. coaching staff, new addition to the form of DeAndre Harris and Javon Powell. Much improved team from the internal program we saw a year ago. They've got an early one-point lead in the conference opener, but they've still yet to figure out how to stop Sam Burmeister. Yeah. Shot fake, raise the defender up, one dribble pull up. It's really tough. Got to be more de disciplined on defense right there. The average double figures his freshman year. Ended up redshirting going into his sophomore season. Struggled last year. Struggled early in the season, but he's got the Cardinals back on top by one. It won't last. Janante Fry, 15-foot perfectionist. Colonels back up by one. Again, got to get Fry going a good bit, too, to help out. Jalen Hart, we can't compliment his skill set enough. Blink of an eye, he scores, Brian. He's been a game changer and has incarnate word out by one. Double figures in the first half of the junior college transfer from New Mexico, J.C. house get an open look, it won't fall. And a tip rebound eventually to Hart. Saved momentarily by Incarnate Word and Javon Powell. 
tips it to the broadcaster in the front row, always a risk. <laughs> you want the ball back? Don't get it near me. <laughs> Great hustle by Powell. That's what he brings. Garner Word now shooting over 55% as Johnson loses control late. Saved by Fry and Bell can push. Colonel's led by as many as nine before Johnson and Sox took over. And now out of control, DeAndre Harris presents possession right back to Incarnate Word. Johnson on the glass, Hart on the run, and Burmeister on the turnover. With his ability to shoot the three ball, his shot fake is that more dangerous because you have to get high hands on that closeout. Since Liam Thomas left the game, we've seen two identical skill sets emerging between both the Cardinals and the Colonels. Height is a non-factor right now. 6'3 six, to 6'6 six, six is the range you're working with, with all 10 players on the board. And now Nichols has slowed it up a little bit since Thomas left, and Incarnate Word was able to retake the lead. Right. Got to make sure he gets something good there. Bell fading from 15. Not a sweet spot. That's normally where Jadante Fry operates. Final word, trying to extend their lead, but a turnover for Jalen Hart. DeAndre Harris is going to be exhausted at halftime. It's a great job by the referees. Going with the travel there, letting the players play. Not calling a foul there. Calling the travel, going the other way. Garnet Word came into the game having some major issues on the glass. Been out rebounded by about six, seven rebounds a game this year. They're plus eight on the glass against Nichols this evening. And after trailing through the first 14 minutes, they're on top by one with 60 seconds to play in the first half. Harris still trying to find a support system, but he'll keep going to work if they will allow a shooting lane. 24 first half points. He's going to be a pro, Brian. Great move to get in the paint to score there. Bell takes a risk on the other end. That gives a seam for Johnson. He'll throw it away. Harris at two on two. Johnson chasing him down. He won't get there, but the shot won't fall. Bell and Fry fighting and finishing. Great second effort by Fry to stay with the play and finish with the and one basket there. You're never happy when you miss a shot, but for DeAndre Harris, he needs to see his teammates get going. Off the miss layup, both Bell and Fry frantic in their pursuit of the loose ball. Jonathan Fry is too good of a player to be held at, at two or three points in the first half. He has four of the last six for the Colonels. Seven points if he can hit this free throw. And Brian, you asked for the support. There it is. High scoring first half, but really no surprise. Both teams have been operating around 80 points per game. And if you think they'll, they'll peel back the approaching conference play, it's still full steam ahead full for both steam. programs. I love it. I love it, Brian. Incarnate Word had owned this matchup through the first four games in the, the relationship of this rivalry. Nichols won for the first time in five career matchups in February. Now the made free throw. Ken Burmeister does not like losing streaks. It's rare to see Incarnate Word lose more than three games in a row. They're on a three-game losing streak. After winning four straight against the Colonels, they're trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses in their last two trips to Thibodeau. With 32 seconds to play, try to hold on for that last shot. Worst case for the Colonels, to know that you'll have the lead at halftime after allowing the 12-0 run by Incarnate Word when they took the lead for the first time this afternoon. Great response over the last four minutes by Richie Riley's club. Yeah, and Brian, I just have to say this, man. As a former Colonel, you love to see Coach Riley having his guys compete like this. It's pretty awesome to watch. You think about the gap years that existed with the program, and it's not as if interest subsided and people stopped paying attention, but when you lose, apathy can become part of the conversation. People don't give up, but they, they just kind of step back. It hasn't taken long for the interest to be reignited. Getting a feel over the holidays as, as fans start to re-arrive in Thibodeau that they realize something special is brewing. Oh, without a doubt, Brian. And for the final 25 seconds, Simi Sox with his 12 points, Jalen Hart with 11. Who will the Cardinals look for in their final possession of the opening half? Sox is underneath with Repahowski watching him. Powell and Hart, Jalen to the rim, blocked by Bell, but they'll call a block on Repahowski. I'm okay with that call. 
But, Brian, you love to see your guys putting their body on the line. Coach Riley has to be pleased with that. You live with that call right there as a coach. Three throws for Hart. It will provide seven solid seconds for Nichols to get the last shot off. Donovan Bell has some of the more surprising athleticism that you will ever see from a 6'2", 170-pound player. Yeah. That he can board up for, for six rebounds a game and come weak side and swat a shot like he just did. Forget the foul. Right. I'm impressed with Bell. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Great effort. Great effort. We used to call those eraser plays, Brian. Even when Hart has some resistance at the rim, he still draws the foul. And this has been a familiar spot for Jalen Hart. He'll be the point guard for the next two years for Incarnate Word. And his ability to get to the free throw line on the road, credit him. Five of six from the floor, a couple made free throws, make it three for three. Two-point game, final seven seconds, and you know it's DeAndre Harris. Splits the double team and draws the foul. It took him 3.2 seconds to get to midcourt. Now he has a one and one with the way Harris has been shooting from the free throw line. No better colonel for the final few seconds to shoot some freebies. Again, great effort by Great effort there by Harris, man, pushing it up the floor, being aggressive. They set the tone really early to be aggressive, and he has not backed off yet. There have been some remarkable scorers in the history of Nichols basketball, but Harris will go down as one of the best. That He has 47 points in the last two first halves, the last two home games for the Colonels. Make it 48, 26 in the first half and a four-point lead. Final four seconds, Hart gets by Harris at midcourt, but he can't get the shot off because Bell prevents it. A block at the buzzer and a four-point lead at the end of the first half. Remarkable job showing some resiliency after Incarnate Word made their push midway through the first half. Yeah, we talk about those effort plays again. Bell again with the eraser play. Great effort by the Colonels so far. 45-41, you knew that Nichols would have their hands full against Incarnate Word. As we look at what went right for Nichols in the opening 20 minutes, DeAndre Harris, he waited for the support to arrive, and when it did, a lot of pressure was taken off of his shoulders in the form of Jadante Fry and Jonathan Bell. Yeah, I mean, Brian, again, I can't speak enough about the way Coach Riley has his guys playing right now. Great energy coming from your head coach, and then great effort by the guys. If you're sitting here and imagining the conversation the Cardinals are having at halftime, it starts and finishes with DeAndre Harris. But knowing what he has been able to do as a playmaker, the composure he's had in looking for his teammates and finding other scorers, your Javon Powell, Jonathan Bell, Liam Thomas, your Janante Fry, the opportunities will be there because of the attention Harris is going to receive in the second half. Oh my gosh, you can see it there on the last play. He had two guys picking him up on his way down the court. But I tell you what, we gotta stay aggressive. The Colonels have to stay aggressive here. Going into the second half, I think Coach Riley again set the tone really early of being aggressive and getting to the rim. They have to continue that in the second half. Colonel defense needs to make an appearance as well. Colonel Word, at one point when they were on their 12-0 run, they were shooting 56% from the floor in the first half. They cool off a little bit and end up shooting 55% in the first half. Even more impressive that you find yourselves with a four-point lead when your opponent shoots 55%. Defense was non-existent in the first half. We'll see if things change for both the Cardinals and Colonels in the second half. Conference opener from Thibodeau, and Nichols has the lead. Brian Johnson and Justin Payne with you in our first of 18 live video streams. What, what a winter it will be as we get to show off some of our new equipment and our new approach as we move for a full-fledged ESPN3 broadcast schedule moving forward. Sit back and relax. We'll get you set for the second half. Colonels on top against Incarnate Word. It's 45-41. Nichols at the half.
thousand points in my current career is a great opportunity that I thank God for the opportunity that I have. I thank all my coaches, my the players that play. I can't thank enough to everybody around me supporting me and uh, getting me through this. I mean, it's just a great feeling to get it done at home and get the win. You know, it, it's just a wonderful feeling. I can't explain it really. I'm excited for him. He's been here a long time and put in a lot of hours in this gym and to be able to to go over a thousand points right here in his hometown and in this gym that you know he's played so many games in is is a special moment for him and I'm really excited for him and he does he puts in a lot of time and our team means something to him and I, I really enjoy coaching him I couldn't be happier for him. It was a great feeling I know I had to get back on defense after I hit the three but uh, it's going through my head like I really did it you know what I'm saying and I just thank everybody again I was like it's a great feeling just got to get the win you know starting as a walk on I mean I didn't let it discourage me I just worked hard in that year and just worked my way up into this point you know what I'm saying like I, I can't thank enough all everybody that gave me this opportunity to be here you know I, I just I'm just thankful for everything really so I just continue to move forward and be better you know
scoring a thousand points in my current career is a great opportunity. I thank God for the opportunity that I have. Defense was optional in the first half from Thibodeau. 45 41 lead for Nichols. 56% shooting performance for Incarnate Word. Colonels have to find a way to quiet the trio of Jalen Hart, Sean Johnson, and Simi Sox. Yeah, Brian, they have to. And then we, if we can continue to score the ball with Harris and get some help with Fry and Powell, look for an interesting second half. Colonels will open in a 2 3 matchup zone as they have to deal with an Incarnate Word offense that has really done a wonderful job avoiding turnovers. That won't happen on the first possession, and Powell gets blocked at the rim. Nichols had six turnovers in the first half. Incarnate Word had five in the first five minutes, but only six in the final 14. Give it up on the first possession, and Nichols can make it a six point lead as they have the ball 18 seconds in. Harris to Fry. This one. Great out-of-bounds play right there by the Colonels, Brian. Regardless of DeAndre Harris's reputation of being a score first and score second player, he understands that all eyes will be on him, and this is when his teammates can take over. No, without a doubt. And, and Brian, so many times the, the little things do not get mentioned a lot. That was a great screen. Executing out of the timeout and to start the second half. Pretty impressive that Nichols has still found a way to include themselves and make some moves and get back in this game with the way the 14-minute the to 8-minute mark played out in the first half. There was a lack of defensive interest for Nichols, and now they get a stop at the rim, come up, get an and one bucket, force a turnover, leads back to seven. And Liam Thomas... Trying to set a screen 22 feet away from the hoop. Wow. If that's on Liam, is that is that four? They will call it on okay. Powell, but okay. he and Liam Thomas were in the neighborhood, and that's three offensive fouls that have been called on screens. And you see Liam Thomas, a lot of questions about what his second half will look like after picking up three fouls. He has to play off in the inside, tries to get the block late, wow. runs into Wyatt. They'll wipe off the basket, but the bigger problem is number two, four, picking up foul number four. And he initially had restraint. He played off of Wyatt, then reached in late. 19.07 left in the game, and all eyes on Adam Ward. Ryan, that's a tough situation. Tough call. Liam tried to belly up. Verticality kept his hand straight up. Refs didn't see it that way. Two of Liam's biggest games in his Southland Conference career have come against Incarnate Worry, but he has been shut down and removed from the picture tonight. No points, one block, three turnovers, and now four fouls. Wyatt misses the free throw, but the damage has already been done. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It'll be interesting to see how Coach Riley adjusts in the second half with Liam with four early. Adam Ward played a season-high 24 minutes against Spring Hill College. One of two from the line for Devin Wyatt and Incarnate Word, but Adam Ward, he will be a feature component of this offense in half number two, still trying to develop his offense. He'll challenge Wyatt, then throw it away late. Simi Sox, an uncomfortable dribbler. Yeah, he'll take it to the rim and almost finish. Should have been a turnover at midcourt when the ball hit his thigh. Colonels will take the missed shot. And Try to find a little more comfort without Liam Thomas. They got a break right there with a missed shot. Javon Powell has not scored in two and a half games. He'll miss this shot, and nobody stops Singleton in transition. I tell you what, that's a credit to Hart, though. Two dribbles and kick it up the floor. It's pretty outstanding stuff right there from your point guard. DeAndre Harris, he tried to be a secondary part of this offense through the first two minutes. Now. He'll try to take back over, goes into three defenders, looks for the bank, misses it long, and Singleton off and running. Hey, good one, Cardinals are throwing everything they can at the Colonels. Singleton normally comes in off the bench. He's there to deliver, and a great find from Sox to Wyatt. Cardinals are back within two. And that's a part of Leon Thomas getting four early, you know, Brian. You have no one there to, to be a, a, a deflector at the rim right there. 
Fry finds some freedom and splashes the three over Sox. He's become a remarkable three-point shooter over the last two years. His first career three-pointer against Incarnate Word in six games, and now Powell is still on the back end. Brian, I watch him put in work, man. That's, that's just hard work. Great effort to save it to Bell. And he almost gets the end one finishes. Bell bucks off of Burmeister. Great offensive performance in the first half by Burmeister, but this is when he can get exposed, trying to stop an athletic wing like Jonathan Bell. Cardinals get back within two. Fry hits the three. Powell gets a turnover, and now Bell has two free throws. Again, great job by the Colonels going back to their makeup, how they started the game, attacking the basket, eventually getting the foul call, and now you can live with two free throw shots. DeAndre Harris and Jadante Fry complement each other so well. Two really diverse and vastly different skill sets that can come together like they have tonight. 39 points between Harris and Fry. It's, it's big time, man. And I'm telling you, I watch Harris, um, Harris and Fry, but Fry put in so much hard work over the summertime, working on his jump shot and it's paying off for him and his ball club. You can be on a losing team and still have a, a winner's mentality, and that's what we're learning about Janante Fry. Has never been on a winning team at Nichols. Colonels don't get the win against Boston College and Samford without Fry. Two big missed free throws by Bell, and Sox has the rebound, but Janante Fry making it clear his senior year will not finish with a, a, a plus 500 record. It's all he wants. That's big time. Will the win. Will the win, Brian. Singleton opened the year as a starter. He's been big off the bench, but he opens the second half on the floor. Yet Sox and Burmeister, no control in the corner. It's off the fingertips of Burmeister. Just like the first half, first four minutes of the second half, a lot of turnovers for the Cardinals. And, and you, Coach, Riley, you, Coach Riley, you have to be pleased about that, that they're not being exposed you know, with, without Liam in the game. Powell, he's due. But another missed shot. There's Great. Bell on the board. Blocked by Whitey. Second in the conference in rejections. His second big block in the game tonight. Hart challenges Ward and comes up with the result he wants. In less than three seconds, Hart goes coast to coast and pulls Incarnate Word to within three. Another acrobatic finish for Hart, man. He's a tough kid. He had 18 points and five rebounds against Memphis. He has 13 tonight. And now Hart watching as Wyatt and Singleton have no answer on the double down against Harris. More free throws for DeAndre. You'd like to see that from great players like Harris, Hart, showing the ball up. Even the great players react to the basketball. You show it up, he jumps up, gets into his body, live at the free throw line. Win or lose, you want to go down with, with your best player. We saw Incarnate Word lose at Loyola Marymount when, when Sean Johnson couldn't get a touch over the last 12 minutes of the game. DeAndre Harris playing a, a complimentary role in the first couple of minutes of this second half, but when Cardinals just went on their little run, scored four straight, who else are you going to look for? It, it's DeAndre Harris. That, that's a sign of a team that understands their identity. Exactly. And just like in the first half, Coach Riley does a great job when the game shrinks back Again, getting back closer, gets the ball in Harris's, Harris's hands for an isolation play. DeAndre Harris is now over 100 career free throw makes at North Texas and Nichols, but it's the amount of free throws he's shooting. He's 8 for 9 tonight. He now has 74 in 12 games with Nichols. He shot 84 in 31 games at North Texas. Wow. Sox available in the short corner. Unselfish pass. Hart didn't want the three. And now it's Banks back to his point guard who scores over Repahowski. i tell you what, that's fun to watch. A short guard that can finish at the rim like that. It's easy to take the first available shot. Hart wanted something better. And then he went to his big man who's had a tough time with turnovers. Banks gets credit for the assist. Smart play for the Cardinals. They make it a three-point game. Fry tries to answer and he runs into two more defenders and draws another foul. Again, Brian, I can't say this enough. I really like how they go back to how they started the game. It means they're, they're doing exactly what their coach tells them to. Be the aggressors, continue to get to the rim. Third foul on Miles Banks. Colonels have watched as Liam Thomas has spent the last three minutes on the bench with four fouls. Now in Cardinal Words, some concern is their big man is forced to sit with three. Colonels hanging tight, close lead in the conference opener at home in Thibodeau.
Lead stands at three for the Colonels. You can pencil him in for 15 points, six rebounds a game, but it's been Fry's ability to explode when Nichols has needed him. 33 points against Sanford. A double overtime win for the Colonels a month ago and Fry clearing the 1,000 point plateau 10 days ago in the second to last home game of the non-conference season. Colonels get called for a reach in on the baseline. Fry's always been forced to be the number one score for Nichols. Refreshing that he can step back and, and be the number two and, and still find a way to score at will. A lot of eyes on DeAndre Harris allowing him to flourish. Exactly. And, and with the, like you said, just like that, with the eyes being on Harris, he's getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one play. And he's able to make those plays. Get on, Dave Fry. It's not just offense. It's full court effort. Forcing the tie up. Colonels will get possession. Little things like that goes unnoticed. With Fry. With Fry. With Fry. He averaged over 20 With points Fry. per game in November and December last year and then fell off, had a rough end of the season. He ended up being moved to the bench. Would have been easy for him to make this season about himself. It's been all team. Couple pump fakes by Banks for the layup. It's tough. You make a great play defensively and you get rewarded on the offensive end. And Banks, after picking up his third foul, Fry knew he could go to work. Now Powell forces this deal. Bell up the floor for the finish. That's a great finish by Bell. Hanging in the air for a layup. That's the energy that this team needed. Burmeister, two first half, three short in the second half, four on two. Powell to Harris, jump stop into the paint, another layup, six straight points in the paint, nine point lead matches the largest of the game for the Colonels. And converting, converting on the transition in is huge, Brian. Harris opened the year with 28 points. Seven rebounds, four assists, and four steals at Boston College. He's gone for 30 in the conference opener. Composure has been key for Harris and Fry, and now Bell and Powell forcing back-to-back -back turnovers, easy buckets, with the Cardinals taking quick shots early in the shot clock. Yeah, and that's what, that's what happens when you do not get a great shot. You allow these Greyhounds from the Colonels to be able to go and attack the rim. It's not a good sight when they're doing that for the opponents. Javon Powell hasn't scored in two games, and it would be easy to examine his offensive inefficiency is, is the true story with JP. But in a game where Nichols has 11 less turnovers than Incarnate Word, it's the pressure by Powell and, and his ability to find the right scores at the right time. Three steals, three assists. When you get 45 points between two players, you, you need a guy like Powell that yes. understands who to get it to and, and when to get it to him. Yes, reminds me a lot of myself when I watch Powell, always setting his guys up and bringing it on the defensive end. That's what your ball club needs, a leader like that. The point guard always say the head of the snake, so your teammates always see you. So they react to, way, to the way you uh, are in the uh, backcourt in front, of, in front of the court. You two had really similar stats, both in that seven to eight points, three, four assists, two, three rebounds, couple steals. You were on a winning team as a point guard for a reason that they could produce those type of numbers, stat stuffers with scores around you. Exactly. Do all the little things and always discipline. The intensity of Richie Riley on full display on the sideline. Youngest Division I college coach, not inexperienced. He says every job should be your dream job. And he has put in work for Nichols in his first year with the Colonels. Yes, he has. Semi Sox has made a living on those 15 foot baseline jumpers. And Sox, after a, a quiet 10 minute stretch without a field goal, 14 points in the game for Sox, but he gets caught on a backdoor cut by Bell. Fortunate that the pass by Powell was led a little too far. And, that, and that's something you don't see quite often from JP. You know, a turnover quite like that, just off the mark right there. John Johnson back in for Incarnate Word, and th this has to be his moment. Only four shot attempts in 18 minutes. He's one of the best scorers in the Southland Conference. He'll watch Sox go baseline and miss the wraparound layup. Sox will pick up his first foul. And Nichols, two fouls away from shooting free throws for the final 14 minutes of the half. And Brian, it's, it's a case of Nichols winning those one-on-one -on -one battles that will eventually win you the war. Boxing out, playing tough one-on-one -on -one defense. Ball is granted. 
19 turnovers, 10 assists for Incarnate Word, but they've become much more one-dimensional in the second half. Powell and Bell, wing-to-wing -wing exchange. They'll set up Harris. He's got Singleton on his shoulder, draws the foul, gets the finish. He cannot be stopped. Wow. For him to have that hang time, to hang in the air, bring the ball up, bring it back down, to bring it back up and score, it's hard for the defenders to really either block his shot or get a hand on the basketball. That is Richie Riley's version of the jet sweep. The way he's able to take Harris baseline to sideline and then give him an angle, give him a step, and if you have to play downhill defending Harris, it's over. It's pretty remarkable stuff. Finally, a missed free throw by Harris. Johnson has the rebound. Garner Ward down by nine. Burmeister has a couple threes, none in the second half. Unselfish pass by Johnson, but Singleton gets Let's swatted go. on a three by Jonathan Bell. That's what we we're talking about right there, those little battles that could win you the war. Effort plays showed a lot of toughness right there by Bell to Ooh. go along with this Colonel squad. Your 6'2", 170-pound guard has four steals, two blocks, eight points, and you have to think twice when... You size up Jonathan Bell on the sideline. Not an easy player to shoot over, even though he would appear to be. Sox, dominant performance first half and second half. Scored 28 against Loyola Marymount. He's up to 16 tonight. Cardinals are back within seven. Strong take there by Sox. He's 11th in the conference in scoring, 13th in field goal percentage. You see what he offers. Yes, physical player. Didn't play a lot as a freshman, but what a season it's been for him. His counterpart, Jadante Fry, the feast of 15-footers. Fry answers, leads back to nine. The amount of work he put in, Brian, it's tough. Singleton almost loses it, courtesy of Bell. Now Johnson gets doubled down deep in the corner, saves it to Sox, and he finally misses. How a late push. And you see the attention Harris is receiving. Wow. Not enough to stop the three. He'll miss from the wing, and Burmeister has the board. Harris challenges Hart, and he gets caught in the corner, loses the ball underneath. It'll stay with Incarnate Word. You, you like to see that. Colonels on the floor, hustle plays. I love that. Reminds us so much of our years back in 2008 and 2009. Richie Riley just hoping Trey, that Dante Fry can survive the next 23-plus seconds, get a two-minute break on the bench for the media timeout. Dante is third in the conference in, in minutes played per game. You finish non-conference playing 33 a game, you've got to tap deep in those reserves for conference. You've got to. It's a, it's a battle. It's a grind, Brian. That's what we were talking about early. Who would have imagined that Fry would be in a position for a professional career when he came here as a walk-on and redshirted his freshman year? Its potential is, is, has been met. His team has a nine-point lead, but a late reach to put the Colonels in a tough position. Liam Thomas already has four fouls. Lepahowski picks up his second. Cardinal ball on the baseline. And one thing, the referees have been calling a consistent game both ways. So you'd like to see that. Richie Riley locked and loaded on the sideline, studying the inbound, and it's a tip by Fry, stolen by Powell. Harris is off and running. Burmeister gets the block. Fry saves it. Harris with the takeaway, a power move for the finish. Toughness, Brian. And look at the bench there. Everyone's on their feet. That's winning basketball, Brian. It's winning basketball. Heart and soul, top to bottom. Coach Riley's starting a tradition, Brian, and it looks really good. For DeAndre Harris to get blocked, stay with the play, get the rebound off the miss by Fry. Even though he misses, Colonels will secure a new possession on the Powell rebound, but he throws it away and Hart can take off. One on three, you can't sleep on Javon Powell. No, he is so quick. Harris challenged by Sox, works in baseline. And the turnovers mounting between both teams. All right, easiest bucket of the game. Easy. You got to you got to take care of the basketball. Harris and Fry are spent right now, both trying to endure a few more seconds before the next media timeout. Richie Riley giving a little push to DeAndre Harris, trying to get him to gut it out over the next minute. 
Fry surrounded by three Cardinals. They forget about Powell. And he finally splashes home an inside-outside three. It's big. You kick it to the middle, draw the attention. And Javon Powell right there to knock down the three. Colonels lead the conference and made threes. Their fifth of the game hands him a 10-point lead. Timeout on the floor, a late reach in. Colonels enjoying every second of rest provided to them. Liam Thomas in severe foul trouble. And without Lafayette Rutledge for another four weeks and Trey O'Neill out until at least Tuesday. Colonels tapping deep into their reserves to try and prevail in conference and game number one in Stouffer Gymnasium in Southland Conference play. 12 point lead, 11 minutes to go. Happy New Year from Thibodeau. Danny on, on, on the beat. points, 18 of 30 shooting. Welcome to DeAndre Harris and Jadante Fry's night. <laughs> they are putting on a show. 34 for Harris, 17 for Fry, and now the largest lead of the game. Colonels are up a dozen. Incarnate Word still trying to locate some additional scoring support for Simi Sox. He and Jalen Hart, real nice showing. Deshaun Johnson, quietest night of the year. He'll draw a foul, but can't finish on the finger roll. How much more of an active participant can he be in this game? They're, they're looking for him, but the defensive attention on Johnson has minimized his impact all night. Yes, and he can start going by doing some of that, getting to the rim and trying to get to the free throw line to establish his jump shot. No love for Johnson. Missed free throw. A one for four night from the floor. He had 28 and 10 against Rice. Put up 27 points in the last game of the back. 2016 season, which was a sign of things to come. He's on his back. But after two missed free throws, he's fortunate that the ball cannot be saved by Bell. A disconnect in the offensive game of Sean Johnson. And after two missed free throws, tight. you tight. have to wonder how much of a game plan part can he become for Incarnate Word over the next 10:45. They've seen no sign that he's ready to erupt. Deflection yeah. by Fry and Bell. And if Sean Johnson is hesitating on threes, you know something must be off in his game. Exactly. But Brian, if he continues to do that, he can try to get his game going right there. Great block shot by the Colonels. He scored 16 plus points in eight of the 11 games this year for Incarnate Word. Good point. Different story tonight. He's held to just three Good. points. Good. Good. And Jalen Hart, oh, the semi socks out of the game. It, it's all about Hart and Johnson right now. Colonels not doing any favors for themselves. They'll hand free throws to Incarnate Word on the reach in 25 feet away from the hoop. Yeah, Brian, you just you can't make those kind of plays. You got to know that I might put them in position to make free throws right here, being at double, being uh, six fouls. In, Jalen Hart, shaky free throw shooter. Been under 70% all season. He'll get a one and one. First one long to the left, and Harris is fouled. He'll get free throws on the opposite end, and that, that's just checking out mentally off a missed free throw when you rush a player like Harris and give him a shot to add two more points to his total. Most definitely. You have to credit Kim Burmeister for putting together a five and six non-conference campaign of a really nice win over LIU Brooklyn, 
Lost by one in overtime to Loyola Marymount. Banks has had the injury. Peavy had a high ankle sprain that he suffered in the Texas game. He's a big time score out of Chicago. Buechler is still out. Wow. Their top four scorers from last year averaged 50 points, 15 rebounds, and an 11 uh, assist per game. All four have either graduated or transferred. They've started from scratch. Have an improved team that's ready to compete in conference play, but they have no answer for DeAndre Harris. He's up to 36 points, but the Colonels can't help themselves. They continue to foul on the opposite end. Yeah, Brian, it's a really tough thing. you got to really discipline yourself to keep my hands out, make sure the referees see my hands so they don't make those calls. Free throws for Singleton. He and Hart both having a tough time making the most of their freebies. Singleton missed a couple in the first half. One and one, and another miss as Bell has the rebound. And Incarnate Word, if they are to come back in this game, you can't have your two starting point guards go 0 for 3 on back-to-back -back trips at the line. Yeah, it's tough. You're not going to win on the road like that missing free throws. 70 points in the first 29 and a half minutes of this game, and now time as a luxury for the Colonels. They can soak up these seconds. Fox down to 10. Powell ready to act as he finds Bell slipping amongst three Cardinals. He'll travel. Take 22 seconds off the clock. You hate to turn it over, but at this stage in the game, Incarnate Word not built to come back through half-court execution. They took the lead on their 12-0 run with a, a run-and-gun style. Turnovers, missed free throws for Incarnate Word. Exactly. They'll try to get back in the game, but sooner or later, Sean Johnson has to start hitting. Quiet night for Kite. He's yet to score. Johnson, you know this is going up, and Sean Johnson, one for six. Yeah, still can't find his rhythm. When those shots fall early, much more easy for a 25, 26 foot three pointer to, to find it, its home within the rim. Different story when you've been missing start to finish. Miss three on one end, Javon Powell answers on the other. If you're Richie Riley, you have to love the pace of this game right now. With you being up 17, this is definitely your tempo right now. 10 points for Javon Powell. And after fouling out in 12 minutes against Spring Hill College, making the most of his Southland Conference debut. Nothing easy in the inside. Liam Thomas on the bench with four fouls. Number three shot blocker in the country. His skill set rubbing off on his teammates. And it's just really, really impressive. Four point game at the half. Nichols now up 17. And even though DeAndre Harris, he has been a star offensively. Javon Powell, DeAndre Harris, Dante Fry, they've done it all tonight. Clock under five, Harris from 25 at an angle. He almost got the dull bounce. 30 seconds later, Incarnate Word back in possession. Yeah. The house yeah. gets run over, wipe it off. Again, you gotta love what the Colonels are doing. When bodies hit the floor, he got the same call in the first half as a block. Again, he tries to take the charge. This time, he gets it outside of the restricted area. Timeout, Ken Burmeister. And the last five minutes have been a flat-out disaster for Incarnate Word. When your shots aren't falling, you're missing free throws, and you're giving up energy plays that, that lead to turnovers. Checkmate. Yeah. You're down by 17, Brian. That's what it leads to. Our question in the first half, when Incarnate Word went on their run, and DeAndre had 20 of the first 32 points for the Colonels, but they were down 33 to 32. Well, where do you go from here? You can't turn away from DeAndre Harris, but how do you assist and improve his performance by finding some more complimentary options? It was Janante Fry, the guy expected to be the leading scorer the last two years. He got to sit back in this game, watch DeAndre Harris take over, and then when all eyes were on Harris, it was Fry becoming the spark that has allowed this 17-point lead to flourish. Exactly. And you have such a strong duo between those two. And when one is off, that you can go to the other with an isolation play. You know, and you got Fry going against six, 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 seven bigs, and he can put it on the floor past them. It's just a really tough matchup for the defense. When you're teaching players how to understand taking a scouting report and then that scouting report translating into impact, easiest way for them to, to look at a team like Incarnate Word that is lacking size but understanding how that aggression, how that attacking mentality 
can lead to a, a point performance like we've seen from Brian Harris? How do you go about it? Yeah, I mean, Brian, you, you, you have those two on like that, and then you have others like JP with their ability to step up right after that with two big threes. They understood that Incarnate Word had a size deficiency, and with Banks picking up three fouls early in the first half, he's back in the game now. But his foul situation is drastically affected Incarnate Word's abil ability to stop the Colonels inside, and they can't stop reaching. He's tough to contain, Harris is. And if DeAndre Harris gets to spend the next eight minutes shooting free throws, is 50 points out of the question? Brian, it's always in the question with eight minutes left. <laughs> you know what happened 15 years ago today, right? MJ put up 51 with the Wizards. Wow. Wow, I'm that not, was today? I'm not saying that should be your goal, DeAndre Harris, but 37 points, 18-point lead. Not, not bad company to keep. Not at all. And with his confidence continuing to grow, you could tell it could be one of those nights. It's a 12 for 15 free throw shooting performance by Harris. That's a new Colonel career high for him. He has a lead at 19 and 38 points to sport on final game of 2016. Burmeister hit two early threes, but he has found no open real estate in the second. Johnson desperate for a bucket, and he finally finds a field goal. Only the second of the game for the conference's number five scorer. You know, it's good to see him get a basket, try to get his confidence going. Again, a New Orleans kid, back close to home. He's had three really nice games against Nichols during his freshman and sophomore year but he was really the third or fourth piece of the offense the last couple of years for Incarnate Word. Different story this season, and now off the bucket, he's back in the picture defensively, swats Harris at the rim. Transition three, but still unfriendly for Sean Johnson tonight, and Banks can't finish in the inside as Repahowski, a hard hit on the sideline. Again, you love to see that hustle from both teams, but especially from Riley's club. He really has them playing with great effort and great intensity, Brian. With Liam Thomas held to just 10 minutes because of his four fouls, this is a seven-man rotation the Colonels are sticking to, and now with 7-12 to go in the game, Liam Thomas back in. Trey O'Neill expected to return on Monday. He's dealt with a high ankle sprain since the Thomas University game back on December 18th. Lafayette Rutledge broke his foot back on December the 5th. Should be back in late January, early December. You can win conference games with a seven-man rotation. That bodes well for late in the year. Yeah, and what it says is that they can reach all their marks that they've set for, for themselves. Overcoming adversity is always top priority in a long season. Burmeister goes one of two, but Fry and Harris, no communication, and they can't hold on to the, the rebound. New shot clock for Incarnate Word, and he can never sleep on a Ken Burmeister team. Seven minutes to go, 16-point game. They have way too many shooters to give them second chances. Yeah. Yeah, if you're Nichols here, you don't want to relax. You want to keep your foot on the net. Banks, a beautiful backdoor feed, and he'll get his second assist of the half. Exactly. Simi Sox has scored in spurts all night. He has 18, but they've been bunched in about three different stretches of this game. If Sean Johnson could get going, they've got 37 points between Hart and Sox. Thomas immediately showing his passing skill set. Powell finds Fry. His second three won't fall. Angry rebound by Sean Johnson. Now the Cardinals can run with Burmeister. Euro stepping into Liam Thomas. Block number two for Thomas. It'll stay with the Cardinals, but that's what you miss when Liam is on the bench. Yes, that is. And his presence is always felt out there on the court, man. Brett Weaver just jumps off the bench and goes, what are they thinking? <laughs> when you are third in college basketball and block shots, it's a good question. No layups for Liam. No, not at all. Banks is doubled, 25 feet away from the hoop. He still finds Sox, who scores from 15. It's a dangerous place right now. And Richie Riley ready to burn a timeout. He understands the importance of the final six minutes. It's a 5-0 run for Incarnate Word, but a mishap on the rebound. 
turnover on one end, and then a second chance field goal for Incarnate Word. These are the moments you have to seize as a coach. Exactly. And again, we talked about overcoming adversity. You want to overcome adversity in parts of the games. We talked about winning battles as well. It's a great timeout by Richie Riley to get his guys refocused, regroup, and hopefully get a bucket here to come out of the timeout. Understanding the tone of your team is one of the more underrated components of coaching. Most definitely. And I mean, you have to grasp that and understand the flow of the basketball game. You know, and uh, you want to have that pace and that tone set already. And they lost it a little bit. Again, great timeout to regroup and refocus. There is so much about this game that is still disconcerting if you're the Colonels. Incarnate Word is down 12 while shooting 52% from the floor. One of the most efficient three-point shooting teams in the conference. They, they've been unable to get going all night. You look at the disconnect between the score and the scoring that Incarnate Word yeah. has been able to do, and, and, and you know that something is missing there. Sean Johnson with, with a quiet nine, but his scoring is always lurking. It, it's nice to be up 12 with six minutes to go, but you have to protect this lead and understand how fragile it is. Yes, and the good thing we have going, the Colonels have going for them is at home, at home right now. You know, it's tough to win conference games on the road. It's tough to win conference games at all. But on the road, sometimes teams may have shooting uh, withdrawals, you know. So hopefully uh, the Colonels can protect home court here. We knew bench scoring would be non-existent in this game. Seven bench points for Incarnate Word, two for the Colonels. The starters have been used at an extreme rate this evening. And Fry gets the backdoor <laughs> heave and hammer. Liam Thomas, that's a seven-foot lob. I tell you what, that's the ones what we call raise the roof, Brian. Raise the roof. 19 for Fry and a 14-point lead. Hart unselfish to Johnson, and he misses another open three. Bell, extra effort, midcourt into Richie Riley's hands. And even with the ball in his possession, he, he still can't stop letting Liam Thomas know about his rebounding effort. That's right. Again, consummate coach. Great job by Coach Riley. We talked about that timeout there. Semi Sox is tough, Brian. Quick exchange. Go up, go under. You know Thomas is trying to block every shot. Play his strength into your hands and now cut it to 12. 22 in the conference opener for Semi Sox. But they can't stop Jadante Fry and he'll get two more free throws and that should be Banks' fourth foul. And we talked about the toughness. It's great toughness by Fry not settling for his jump shot, which he has been making, but getting all the way to the rim there. Last four minutes of this game lulled you to sleep a little bit. Long possessions. Colonels have kept it at 12 to 17 by not looking to run and, and minimize mistakes. But final five minutes, it's tightening up. Physicality really intensifying out of the last time out. Without a doubt, again. Great timeout by Coach Riley to regroup. After that timeout, he gets an alley-oop dunk to re-energize the fans and his bench. Gets his guys going again. Great call. Special season for Jadante Fry. Tenth in the conference in scoring, twelfth in rebounding. He's up to 21 in the game. And in his career, his worst performances in the Southland Conference had been against Incarnate Word. He came in 11 for 29 from the floor against UI Dub. Different story tonight. And defensively, Jadante Fry gets his leg out. Simple, harmless deflection, but this stops possession, forces the sideline inbound, and he's been in the head of these Cardinal offensive players all night. That's a great point, Brian. Could have possibly stopped two points right there on that kick. Jalen Hart understanding the importance of the final five minutes. Draws the trip up. He'll get some free throws. And now Javon Powell joins Liam Thomas. Both players with four fouls. And you, you have to do that. When you're struggling from the three-point line, you have to continue to attack the basket if you're in corner word. There's plenty enough time for you to try to claw your way back into this game. Double bonus for the final five minutes. And even though Incarnate Word is having the worst free throw shooting performance of their season, this is one of the best free throw shooting programs over the last three years in Division I basketball. But something is off with the Cardinals tonight. 
They are eight for 18 from the line. And they trail by 13. Wow. DeAndre Harris not making life easy on the Colonels down the stretch. He'll pick up his third foul. This is what you hate about losing Lafayette Rutledge and, and Trey O'Neill. You have an off guard and a point guard that are still injured. DeAndre Harris, with all the minutes he's played tonight, exhausted as he has to become the primary ball handler down the stretch. Without a doubt. But if anybody can do it, Brian, Harris can. Johnson from 26 feet. His range is remarkable. The lead is down to 10 and an injury off of the make. DeAndre Harris clutching his left knee. Oh, no. Went knee sprinting out on the floor. The Colonel's second year trainer. Having a quick conversation with DeAndre Harris, who's walking in front of the Cardinal bench, trying to keep his composure off what looked to be a, a difficult landing spot. Yeah. It was contact midair that led to the collision. And Harris, after making a long walk to midcourt, not interested in heading to the bench. No, He'll stay in the game. Not at all. It just shows toughness right there. He's a tough kid. Harris will take a quick leave. Liam Thomas, Jadante Fry, Jonathan Bell, Javon Powell, and Stevie Repahowski for the Colonels. Johnson, Sox, Wyatt, Burmeister, and, and Hart for UIW. Burmeister continuing to state his case as a primary starter for the rest of the season. And you would expect these five on the floor to remain in for the final 435 from Thibodeau. 90% of this game, Colonels have led. Now they need to lock in for the last four and a half minutes up by 10. Yeah, Brian, I look to think the Cardinals going to amp up the pressure here with Harris being on the bench right now. Liam Thomas will head to the free throw line. Wyatt couldn't resist on the denial. And after a great start to the season from the free throw line, Thomas was 5 for 11 the last two games from the strike. He, he attempted just 12 free throws in the first 11 games of the year, 11 in the last two. Foul trouble all night, two big attempts for Thomas, but he's already done his job by drawing foul number five on the number two shot blocker in the conference, Devin Wyatt. His day is done. Yeah, and that's huge right there. You get a guy of his athleticism out the game, advantage Colonels. And Liam Thomas with four minutes and 23 seconds to play. He has his first point of the game. One for two, but a tip out by Fry. And Richie Riley puts his hand up. Stop sign time. Use every second of the shot clock up by 11. Little things by seniors, man, is so huge. When you are coaching the oldest team in the country, this is what you want to see late. But Powell called for the push off. And a turnover with Incarnate Word taking advantage of the aggression by Javon Powell. Without a doubt. And after watching Wyatt vacate after picking up his fifth foul, the Colonels will lose their junior point guard, Javon Powell. Back-to-back -back home games, he's fouled out. Yeah, we talked about the foul trouble all game long. Two big pieces for each team. Adam Ward, Zach Young, and Brett Weaver, those are your options on the bench for Nichols. Yeah. It's a lean team. You cannot afford to play five extra minutes. You've got to settle this game in regulation. Without a doubt. John Johnson starting to take over late. Bell gets bucked away by Sox. Johnson ready to hoist from 27 feet. Another one. Finally gets it going. His range is the floor. Yeah, yeah. Wherever almost, he's at. You almost expect it because he wasn't hitting all game. You're like, you know he has to hit one. It's what he has done all year. Another big performance in the second half for him. And DeAndre Harris called for his fourth foul on a push off. And a scary situation brewing for the Colonels. 17 point lead, it's down to eight. A long three and a half minutes remaining. Final media timeout from Thibodeau. Liam Thomas playing with four fouls. Javon Powell just fouled out. DeAndre Harris, 38 points but he'll take a seat with four fouls and three and a half minutes left on the clock. Exciting and explosive night for Harris. He wants the win. Colonels up eight. Final media timeout from Thibodeau.
A foul fest from Thibodeau tonight. Both teams with 21 fouls. And now the Colonels with an eight-point lead. Concern mounting for Javon Powell, Liam Thomas, and DeAndre Harris. Thomas, Harris, they both have four fouls. Powell on the bench for the rest of the game after fouling out a minute ago. It's like we talked about earlier. The referees are doing a good job of being consistent, calling it both ways. John Johnson has taken over for Incarnate Word over the last four minutes. He'll slip to the free throw line. Gets by Thomas, but walks with it. And that's the reputation of Liam Thomas. Yeah. Number three shot blocker in the country. He came in with 19 blocks in the last four games. Has a couple tonight, but it's because he hasn't played. Only 14 minutes in the game because of foul trouble for Thomas. Yeah. Harris waits for the double team, spins into it. And Richie Riley cannot waste another second. He'll call for a timeout. Colonels are down to their final timeout with three minutes to play. Yeah, we saw we saw what can happen when Liam when Liam's presence is felt. How much do you have to extend the court when you lose your point guard and, and now DeAndre Harris expecting a half court trap? You almost have to to bring a guy like Jonathan Bell and, and even a Liam Thomas outside the three point line, so you have that support system. We're seeing the Cardinals double down whenever Harris crosses midcourt. Yeah, and you got he does a great job though. You have to keep the ball in the middle of the floor so that you can see the whole floor. So just showing the ball, maybe using some pass fakes and splitting those traps. You know, being strong with the basketball after that and delivering it to the open man. You're Jadante Fry and DeAndre Harris right now. It's been a heart pumping performance. These are two guys who understood their usage rate would, would be the story and what would separate them between most players approaching conference play. They 33 minutes a game for Jadante. DeAndre's minutes have increased dramatically. They've been on the bench for just one minute apiece tonight. Got to dig down deep for the final three minutes. Have to. Johnson. Wow. Forcing the turnover on the sideline is DeAndre Harris having a hard time dealing with the relentless assault provided by Sean Johnson. And that's what we're talking about, Brian. You expect the Cardinals to amp up the pressure here. And another wing three. Johnson finally misses. Banks on the board. Sent packing by Thomas. Wow. Another eraser play by Liam Thomas. It's so good to have him back in the game. <laughs> Three blocks in 13 minutes. Typical night for Liam Thomas. And with the lead down to eight, every possession paramount for both teams. Burmeister, two first half threes, his first of the second half. We got a game, Brian. His dad will call timeout. And from 17 points down to five, Nichols trying to fight to the finish line. Sam Burmeister, Sean Johnson, Cindy Sox, and Jalen Hart not making life easy for the Colonels down the stretch. Without a doubt, if, you, if you're Richie Riley right here, I want to be able to watch out for the traps here and as well as get us a great shot for my best player, Harris, right here. You understood that DeAndre Harris was going to receive a significant amount of attention in the second half. Two turnovers on the last two possessions. Double team has been immediate. What can they do to provide a little relief to Harris before the, this barrage of defenders is, is applied in, in, into his face? And you have to deal with that relentless assault from every Cardinal guard. Yeah, well, you, one thing you could do is you could come with a ball screen to release some of that pressure. Or Harris needs to be strong with the basketball yeah. and split that and then get it to the open player. Five-point lead, just stood at 17. You've got a team that wants to win. They expect to be Southland Conference champions. Had a great game from the free throw line. You're in double bonus for the next two and a half minutes. You still have to approach this from a position of power yes. over the next two and a half minutes. Yes, you want to keep playing with the same aggression that you've been playing with, attacking the rim and getting to the free throw line here for the Cardinals. For Nichols, it's been turnover, something that was not a factor or a problem through the first 10 minutes of the second half. Nichols had eight turnovers through the first 30 minutes. They have eight over the last eight minutes. Yeah. Fry, Repahowski, Harris, Bell, and Thomas for the Colonels. Banks, Burmeister, Simi Sox, Jalen Hart, Sean Johnson for UIW. 2.35 on the clock, and DeAndre Harris, no other option. Your point guard is fouled out, and here comes the double. Here comes the trap. You have to take a bucket if it's available, and there it is. Getting it to the open player, being aggressive at the rim. 
Put the pressure what we back on Incarnate about. Word. Exactly. Johnson's running baseline, and Thomas has to apply help. Jalen Hart and Burmeister working in tandem. 20 points for Hart. Eight in the second half for Johnson, but he is not done being dealt with by Liam Thomas. Fourth block of the game for Thomas. And now a little relief for the Colonels as Harris getting hounded at midcourt. Off and running, looking for his 40th point, not yet. That's not a great decision by Harris right there. You want to get a great shot. Sox and Johnson, everything from the outside by Incarnate Word. Burmeister, quick, slippery dribbling. Hart blocked again by Thomas. Tracks it down, but it lands in the lap of Johnson who answers. Wow, wow. I tell you what, Liam is a, a racer. He erases everything at the, at the rim, Brian. Such a conscientious play by the Cardinals to track down the block. Forget a two-pointer. Johnson gets three, final 80 seconds, and the battle intensifying as Nichols is dealing with constant harassment from DeAndre Harris and Janante Fryan. Harris has to be careful whenever he's creating separation. Four fouls for Harris, only one timeout left for Nichols. Harris by two defenders, into Thomas, wraparound bucket. You talk about digging deep there, Harris splitting the trap like we talked about. Here's your game as Hart right by all five Colonel defenders and with 56 seconds to play, lead is down to four. He's so fast and quick. You have to be careful here if you're the Colonels. You don't want to fall into the trap of playing fast. Intelligent decision by Bell. He's being bodied up by Burmeister. And finally, Fry is fouled. Jalen Hart picks up his second. Two free throws for Fry, who sits at 21 points tonight. Again, that's a great job by Fry pulling it back out. You don't want to get sucked into playing that game, taking quick shots that Incarnate Word's trying to get you to do. Cardinals are accustomed to playing close games on the road. Lost by five at Texas. Lost by one in overtime to Loyola Marymount. A trail by four off the missed free throw by Fry. And now some offense, defense. Banks leads. Singleton is in. Colonels will switch to a man-to-man -man defense with a big size discrepancy approaching. Smallest lineup we've seen from Incarnate Word tonight. Look like they're going with their offensive group here, Brian. Now it looks like Richie Riley calling off the man-to-man -man and will sink back into his zone. Fry does hit the second. Five-point lead, 45 seconds to play. Johnson, Hart, and Sox. That's been the trio tonight for Incarnate Word. They almost turned it over at midcourt. But Nichols still gets the eventual turnover, and that's good news for the sanity of the Colonel coaching yeah. staff. Without a doubt. They saw a double there. Reps missed it. It's fine. Played out their way in it regardless. Richie Riley needs a new pair of shoes. Tread marks. <laughs> Kirk Franklin stump. Foul on the inbound and a double bonus for the Colonel. Singleton wrapping up Harris. And forget 50. He'll be happy for a 40-point performance and a win. Yeah. 26 in the first half, 12 in the second. Colonel's trying to keep their composure. It's been heated down the last two and a half minutes. Yeah. A pair of big free throws for the graduate transfer from North Texas. Almost an air ball. And you can see fumes. Yeah. from DeAndre Harris, 37 minutes played tonight. And what he's done late, again with an offensive rebound right there and the foul. It's remarkable. He's a special player, Brian. He's a special player. 40 points in his first game in Southland Conference play. He's seeing stars while the rest of us are watching the stars. Yes, without a doubt, Brian. Seven-point lead with 37 seconds to go. Brian, I can't speak about how what he did when Incarnate Word was trapping here late to try to creep back in the game. He split the traps like we talked about, got it to the open player, and that was it. Now after missing two free throws, Harris settles home and gets his 41st point of the game. Little breathing room with 36 ticks left. Hart 
a rim run. Gets it back to Johnson. He'll tee up another deep three wow. and make his third of the second half. It's not going away. Harris hounded on the inbound, and with 27 seconds to play, he's back to the free throw line. Three points in the first half for Johnson, 14 in the second half, 14 in the last 10 minutes of the second half. Yeah, yeah I know Coach Burmeister's like, where has that been all game? Uh, on one end, you, you look at what Hart, Sox, and Johnson have done, and you're thrilled that you get 61 points, but they've all been contributed at, at different stanzas and, and spurts in this game, and it's allowed DeAndre Harris to be the complete package tonight. He's done all the scoring for the Colonels and minimized those three scores for the Cardinals. Uncharacteristically, Harris struggling from the free throw line late. Yeah. One for two trip. Remains a two possession lead. Cannot allow a three pointer on this possession. Hart drawing a mysterious foul from behind. And it's on DeAndre Harris. Wow. He'll receive a warm round of applause and a lot of love from these fans who just got to witness a 42 point performance at home. He left it all out on the court. He'll spend the last 24 ticks on the bench, and Zach Young called into action for the first time tonight. I'll tell you what, he's going to have to handle some ball pressure because Incarnate Word's going to come with it after these two free throws. Jalen Hart's speed, it's transcended all defenders, and his impact really being felt in the last two minutes. Jalen Hart makes two minutes feel like four minutes with the way he's extended this game. Without a doubt. So fast, so quick, and strong with the basketball. He'll ah! miss another free throw. It's a career high against a Division ah! I opponent for Jalen Hart. His 22 ah! points he's contributed this evening. But the worst free throw performance of the year for Incarnate Word. Couldn't come at a worse time. They'll go one for two. And now it's ball control and free throw shooting for the Colonels. Repahowski just gets it in. Late double. Finally a reach and send Fry back to the line. Brian, this 22.7 could take a while. No timeouts for the Cardinals, one for the Colonels. It certainly helps, but you can see four or five fouls over the final 22 seconds. And this is such a familiar position to be in for UIW. Loyola Marymount, they led throughout the game and actually had a four point lead with seven seconds to go before they fouled the Lions three times in the final seven seconds. Brian Harris leaving a lot of points at the line. Coach Burmeister said before the game he, he hopes road losses like the Loyola Marymount game will teach his team how to win late on the road. They're certainly showing some progress with the way they've played Nichols late. Fries up to 23 points, final 20 seconds. Sox is open, but Fry is back in the picture to block the ball out of bounds. You have to be careful there. Brian, so you don't foul a three-point shooter. Great contest by Fry right there. Ten block shots for the top team in the conference in blocks. And now a deflection by Fry. A deep three by Johnson. He misses, but Sox has the rebound. Liam Thomas, block number five. He's fouled. Free throws for the Colonels. Victory is in their sights. Great effort by Liam Thomas and Jadante Fry. Not giving up on the offensive board. Two big contests by two tough colonels. And you get Jalen Hart out of the game. Fifth foul on Hart, he'll depart. Liam Thomas has six block shots in 18 minutes. That's, that's tough, Brian. That's tough. He grew up playing tennis. He was a, a big time swimmer in Australia and you see his reaction, his reflexes Unique skill set for a big man, and he sinks a big free throw. I actually got to, to watch him when he played high school as well, out here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And man, was he fun to watch. A gazelle running down the floor, running and jumping. Seven foot, 200 pounds, one of the best shot blockers in the country. He has the lead at eight. Cardinals are desperate. Singleton misses the three, and Thomas will end the game back at the free throw line. Brian, again, fun to watch. And I know the Colonels are loving to have him back on the floor because he only got to play limited amount of minutes in the first half. 
Coach Payne, you more than most understand that it's not real until you do it in conference. Most definitely, Brian. you got to win those games, especially home games in conference. Liam Thomas, three straight makes. And Richie Riley can finally take a breath. First year head coach of the Colonels, 1-0 in Southland Conference play. What a way to go into the new year. 94 to 84, Nichols survives a rush rally offered by the Cardinals from the eight minute mark down to the two minute mark. They turn a 17 point deficit, they cut it to four. Liam Thomas's defense, DeAndre Harris's offense, a night to remember for Nichols. Without a doubt, Brian. I mean, the, the, the uh, points per possession yeah. Harris had tonight, it was amazing. He and uh, Jadante Fry were amazing tonight. 42 points for DeAndre Harris. He had 26 points in the first half after scoring 22 points in the first half against Spring Hill College on Wednesday. Now you find yourself with a 1-0 mark after beating the team that finished third in the Southland Conference last year, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Preseason number two this year. They finished in second last season. They've got the early favorite in conference player of the year in Rashawn Thomas. If you split this weekend, it would be viewed as a, a big time success story. Forget a split, go for the sweep. Without a doubt. And I'm sure that's what Richie Riley is telling his guys right now. I love how he started this game, establishing the run for say, as in football, of getting to the rim in basketball and winning at the free throw line. Nichols played with a seven man rotation tonight. They had just two bench points until the final couple minutes of this game. You're always concerned that DeAndre Harris, Jadante Fry, Liam Thomas, they'll, they'll be so exhausted that they can't finish and, and perform, make clutch shots down the stretch. Not the case tonight. Cardinals made their run. Colonel stayed poised and made some big free throws down the stretch. Without a doubt. And, and to finish that route, I think it was DeAndre Harris stepping through those traps. I can't tell you how big that was. As Incarnate Word started to creep back in this game, he stepped through those traps and got the pass to the open player to make the layup. Post-game interviews with DeAndre Harris and Richie Riley are upcoming. 18 conference games, none of them are easy. To open the year with a win after being picked to finish last in the preseason poll, Colonels have been making noise since they beat Boston College on the road to open the season. Nichols 1-0 in Southland Conference play after a 94-84 win against Incarnate Word. We'll catch up with Coach Riley and DeAndre Harris shortly. This is Colonel Basketball on your home for Nichols State University Athletics. GoColonels.com.
I gotta look straight. Alright, Bill, let's get it. Twenty three points, six rebounds, four blocks for Jadante Fry. Mm -hmm. One and oh in Southland Conference play after a ninety four to eighty four win. Liam Thomas is number three in the country in blocks, but he had foul trouble all night. Mm -hmm. You just decided to, to pick up the, the block shot load, didn't you? Yeah, you know, I uh, I had to step to the five. Actually, at one point, you know, our bigs was in foul trouble. We haven't practiced that all year, but, I mean, we did what we had to do, fall back, you know. We just played through adversity, really, through the foul trouble and everything, and just, just got the dub. And one and know, like we predicted last in the conference, we had to come out with a statement on New Year's Eve, you know, and just get the win. It's going to be a factor all season. It's not the determining factor and what motivates you, but when you look back at, at the preseason poll and um, yeah. Nickel State University, yeah. last place, 13 teams, you have wins over Boston College, Samford, and now you beat the number three team in the conference from last year by yeah. 10 at home. H how many more statements are you ready to make this year? Oh, man, every game, every game we have left on our schedule, we, we want to win, and I don't see why we can't do it. We come out every night complete play hard, play together like we did tonight, whether we're at home or on the road. Whatever's going on, that adversity we got to go through, we're going to fight, try to win the Southern Conference Championship. You never want to lose, but being a part of, of, of losing teams, uh -huh. it, it would be easy to let a, a loser's mentality yeah. seep into your mind. Yeah. You've, you've never done that, and, and, and you've played as a leader all season long, uh -huh. understood that, that to win – a lot of it comes from just the way you carry yourself. Yeah. When you have those moments where you're in, in the huddle and they look at you and say, mm. hey, AJ, you're moving to the five. Yeah. It'd be easy to sit back and go, well, well wait a second. This wasn't planned. We weren't ready yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. Leaders are born in moments when they're asked to do things they're, they're unfamiliar and unaccustomed to doing. Yeah, I just want to do whatever I have to do to win my team. Whether Whatever position coach puts me at, whatever he asks me to do, I just want to get my teammates involved and just get the win. You know, so I'm a, in my heart, I just want to win. I just want to play hard and play for the guys, play for my coaches, play for myself, everything. Just all around, just be a team effort. And I know that with me and with the backup that I have with the team and the coaches, I know we could get any, anything done, you know. How contagious is Richie Riley's energy? So contagious. You know, it, that's the one thing I love about him. There's many things I love about him, but he, every game he says, like, we, I got your back every step of the way. Before every game, during the timeouts, he always say, I got your back, and his energy is incredible. He coaches us that way in practice, whether we're off the court. His energy is phenomenal, and I love it, you know. And all the guys have transferred that among each other. DeAndre Harris puts up 42 points yeah. and, and was the man. He scores 26 huh. in the first half, but it felt like this game was played at so many smart scoring stages where – he went and drew all the attention early. Uh -huh. You waited your turn, yeah. and, and, and then you took over. Yeah. How does that relationship materialize during the game where you know when to step back and let him have his moments, uh -huh. and then right when those double teams are intensifying, Jadante Fry decides to make himself available? Yeah, like I said, it's a team effort all the time. I mean, DeAndre is a phenomenal player, and we have his back, and he's always coming through, you know, but – it like I, it's just it's a team effort. So if it's my if my night, his night, anybody's night, we have such good talent and players that it could be anybody's night. And I just I just let the game come to me really. I don't really want to force too much, do too much. But when it's time to step up, I want to do that for my team and be a leader. You have a really good Texas A&M Corpus Christi coming to town uh -huh. on Monday night. Really, you've got the number three and two teams from a year ago in the Southland Conference mm -hmm. that you get to welcome to Thibodeau to start the season. Mm -hmm. Preview of 2017 against the Islanders. What can we expect on Monday night? Uh, same thing you saw tonight, just getting better every game. You know, we expect we want to win the game, just want to make a statement. You know, like I said, they picked us last. We're not worried about that. We want It's okay with the underdogs. We just want to come out, give a good play, and just win the game, you know. What's on Jadante's 2017 wish list? Uh, a conference championship. That's all I don't worry about. Jadante Fry, 23 points, six rebounds, four blocks. En enjoy New Year's Eve. Yes, sir. Celebrate the season you've already had, but celebrate the season that is still to come. Yes, sir. Happy New Year's, and let's get it. Go Colonels. Colonels by 10 against Incarnate Word. What a way to start off the 2016-2017 Southland Conference slate of games. That'll do it. Our first full-featured video broadcast. We can't wait to, to show you what we have in store for the upcoming season. We'll see you Monday night. Colonels and the Islanders, your home for Nickel State University Athletics, GoColonels.com. Let's get it.